to continue our discussion of spatial correlation coefficient, uh, recall that I said that these correlation coefficients, nine of them, are difficult to measure in a real non homogeneous, non isotropic turbulence. Usually, when measured, they are only measured in one direction, say R1. In homogeneous turbulence, as we said earlier, all statistical correlations of uh, time average fluctuating components are 0, uh, their gradients are 0, but gradients of mean quantities can be finite. That is the definition of homogeneous. Isotropic turbulence implies that any relation between the turbulence quantities must be constant or invariant under rotation of the coordinate system and under the reflection with respect to the coordinate uh, system. As such, turbulence cannot be isotropic unless it was also homogeneous. So, what this means is for a homogeneous isotropic turbulence, only R11, R22, and R33 will be finite because all other quantities would involve uh, spatial gradients of phi 1 dash, phi 2 dash, and therefore they would all be 0 for i naught equal to j. And secondly, for 180 degree rotation, and let me explain this. So, let us say if I had x 1, x 2, and x 3, and let us say I am considering at some point the fluctuation u dash, the fluctuation u dash, <coughs> and the fluctuation v dash, let us say. Now, if I turn this system through 180 degrees, so that uh, x 2 takes this position and therefore, x 3 would take that position. And this is the negative x 2 and negative x 3 that is the turning through 180 degrees then in this new coordinate system x 1, x 2, x 3, you will see v dash will now appear negative, v dash will be negative in the new system. And therefore, you will see the time averaging of the product u 1 dash, u 2 dash in the first system it will equal u 1 dash into minus u 2 dash in the second system uh, and this would essentially be minus u 1 dash u 2 dash. Now, plus u 1 dash u 2 dash equal to minus u 1 dash u 2 dash can only be true if u 1 dash u 2 dash were identically 0. That is the meaning of homogeneous isotropic turbulence and for that only R 1 1, R 2 2 and R 3 3 would be finite. Further, R 2 2 and R 3 3 would also equal since the coordinate system uh, is invariant uh, under rotation about x 1 axis that is what I showed. So, the R 1 1 f r coefficient parallel to x 1 axis is called the longitudinal coefficient whereas, uh, coefficient r 2 2 equal to r t 3 equal to g r is called the lateral coefficient. That is what I showed in the slide here. This is goes the lateral coefficient, this is the longitudinal coefficient. Both f r and g r decline to 0 as r tends to infinity. For a given r, f r turns out to be usually of a bigger magnitude than g r. The coefficient curves are nearly parabolic near r equal to 0 and therefore, symmetric about uh, uh, r equal to 0. Expanding therefore, f r and g r in Taylor series about r equal to 0, you will see and retaining only the first couple of terms, you will see f r would equal 1 when r is equal to 0 uh, minus r by what I have called L f squared and I will define L f in a minute uh, plus additional term 
Likewise, g r would be approximately equal to 1 minus r by l g whole square plus uh, several terms, where l f square l f square would turn out to be minus 2 times d 2 f by d r square r tends to 0 raised to minus 1 and l g square will be minus 2 d 2 g d r square. These are the projections of the second derivative of f and you will see for transfer for longitudinal correlation uh, the l f would appear as that and l g would appear somewhere over there. That is the estimate of l g and this is the estimate of l f. The Kolmogorov scales of course, would be very, very small distance l epsilon would be somewhere here and here but the integral scales would be of that order because there there's the integral of this curve uh, between zero and infinity and likewise here so that lf and lg are somewhere between l epsilon and l integral the two co two length scales which we had earlier identified we have now identified a third length scale which is in between these lf and lg are called Taylor micro scales uh, and uh, they are defined in this manner 2 u 1 square divided by d u 1 dash by d x 1 whole square raised to 0.5. So, you can see this has a length dimension squared raised to 0.5 and therefore, l f and likewise l g would be based on u 2 prime square separated by distance x uh, in x direction. The special derivatives are very, very difficult to measure because uh, in a turbulent flow to measure fluctuating velocities simultaneously at two adjoining points, it, it turns out to be quite a difficult task. And therefore, the gradients of fluctuations in x one direction would be quite difficult. We will see how to get over that difficulty, but before we do that, we will uh, make some important observations. L f and L g are in, in L f and L g the derivatives are difficult to measure that is correct. Uh, nonetheless, if this local spatial change is imagined to have been caused by the smallest scales of motion, then L f and L g can be regarded as the average dimensions of the range of small scale motions, because they are close to r equal to 0 and therefore, they can be considered to be range of small scale motions. Similarly, if we integrate f r from 0 to infinity, we will get integral scales l int f and l int g and thus we have four length scales l f the micro scale in longitudinal direction, micro scale in the transverse direction, integral scale in the longitudinal direction integral scale in the transverse direction in a simple homogeneous isotropic term. Besides of course, L epsilon at the smallest Kolmogorov scales where viscosity kills turbulence and isotropy prevails. How do we estimate L epsilon? So, recall that in slide 9 I showed that Kolmogorov related L epsilon to nu cube kinematic viscosity cube divided by epsilon raised to 0.25. Therefore, L epsilon can only be estimated if we can estimate epsilon the magnitude of the rate of kinetic energy dissipation. It can be estimated by noting that in isotropic turbulence and there is a wonderful book by Heinz, it is called Turbulence an Introduction to its Mechanism and Theory published by, nine, by McGraw Hill in 1959 where some properties of isotropic turbulence have been given and one of them is that uh, d u 1 dash by d x 1 whole square would equal d u 2 dash by d x 2 whole square, but it would only be equal to half of d u 1 dash by d x 2 whole square equal to d u 1 by 2 d u 2 dash by d x 1 whole square and so on and so forth. So, remember uh, rho epsilon uh, is actually equal to mu times 2 du 1 dash by d x 1 
square plus 2 uh, d u 2 dash by d x 2 whole square plus uh, 2 times d u 3 dash by d x uh, 3 whole square plus uh, d u 1 dash by d x 2 plus d u 2 dash by d x 1 whole square plus uh, d u 1 dash by d x 3 plus d u 3 dash by d x 1 whole square plus uh, d u 2 dash by d x 3 plus d u 3 dash by d x 2 whole square. Now, you will we showed that uh, all these will be equal in isotropic turbulence and therefore, I have mu times let us say 6 times d u 1 dash by d x 2 uh, d x 1 whole square. And then, uh, but uh, d u 1 dash by d x 1 is equal to half times d u 1 dash by d x 2 whole square. Uh, and therefore, uh, you will see here d u 1 dash by d x 2 square. This will become d u 1 dash by d x 2 whole square plus d u 2 dash by d x 1 whole square plus 2 times d u 1 dash by d x 2 into d u 2 dash by d x 1. Uh, as the first term and likewise there will be second term and third term. But if I make use of this relationship, if I then you will see this will become 2 times d u 1 dash by d x 1 whole square <coughs> and then uh, d u 2 dash by d x 1 square would again become equal to 2 times d u 1 dash by d x 1 whole square and this would equal 2 times d u 1 by dash by x 2 will be 2 times square root into square root into d u 1 dash by d x 2 uh, square. And therefore, you will see uh, this is nothing but uh, 2 plus 2 into, into 4 that is uh, 2 plus 2 4 uh, plus 4 is 8. So, I will get 8 times d u 1 dash by d x 1 whole square from this. Likewise, I can show I will get 8 times d u 1 dash by d x 1 Square uh, uh, from these also, and, and this is uh, d u. So I get essentially three into and therefore all this will become twenty four plus six is equal to thirty mu times thirty d u one dash by d x one whole square. And that is what I have shown here that rho into epsilon, remember this definition L f is equal to 2 times u 1 dash square over d u 1 dash by d x 1 square. And that is what I have shown. So, epsilon would become essentially 15 times nu d u 1 dash by d x 1 whole square is equal to 30 times nu uh, u 1 dash whole square by L f and likewise 15 nu times u 2 dash by L g whole square. So, this is how one estimates epsilon provided we know this quantity and this quantity we can also estimate L f. To estimate now integral length scale consider homogeneous pure shear flow in which the strain rate S i j of the mean velocity gradient is constant. In the turbulent kinetic energy equation all spatial gradients of product quantities would vanish, uh, but the mean quantities would survive 
and so would this survive, uh, but that would go to d term will go to 0, b term will go to 0 and production and dissipation would survive. Then from turbulent kinetic equation and assuming steady state, uh, we would have uh, minus rho u prime u j prime mean velocity gradient equal to tau dash i j d u dash by d x j which is equal to rho times dissipation rho into dissipation and or in other words production will exactly equal to uh, equal dissipation. This is called equilibrium uh, state. Another way of writing this is u i j u prime j equal to s i j by 2 remember uh, equal to nu times remember this is tau dash as mu times uh, strain rate s i j small s i j is uh, d u i by d x j plus d u j dash by d x i whereas s i j is from from the mean quantities by d x j plus d u j by d x i that is the mean s i j. So, in other words I get u i prime u j prime time average into s i j by 2 equal to nu times small s i j s i j divided by 2 uh, and that is equal to epsilon because I have divided through by density. So, you get that as a very interesting result. Now, the left hand side of this equation is associated with large scale motion u i dash u i j u i dash s i j by 2 is really uh, dimensionally because u i dash u j dash is essentially v dash capital V dash squared divided by L integral essentially large scale motion because the mean, mean velocity gradients are involved and that would equal v dash cube divided by L integral. And since that is equal to epsilon, epsilon would also be equal v dash cube by L integral. This is a very, very important result. Remember, epsilon is associated with very, very small scale motion and action of viscosity and yet it can be estimated from the representative scales of the large scale velocity fluctuation and large scale integral length scale. And therefore, this is uh, sometimes called the first law of turbulence that the ability to estimate epsilon i j uh, or epsilon from large scale fluctuation velocities and integral length scale is a very welcome result because it helps us uh, later on in economic uh, computation of turbulent flow uh, and this result is routinely used in by modelers of turbulent flow equations. Another way of writing this same is that S i j S i j strain rates of smallest fluctuating motion divided by the strain rates of mean motion would be v dash cube L in nu divided by v dash L in squared and that would equal v dash L in by nu or the turbulent Reynolds number formed from uh, fluctuations of the mean and integral length scale. So, this is ten totally representative of the large scale. What it says is that and since R e t int L int is, is of the order of 100, it means that the strain rates of the fluctuating quantities at the smallest scales are much, much greater than the strain rates of uh, the mean uh, quantities like u, uh, but the strain rates formed from u dash are much, much greater than these. Another way of saying is we can expect therefore that in terms of amount of straining, the small scale motions are totally again uncorrelated with, um, uh, with, the, uh, with the large scale motion. From the results of the previous two slides, we can now estimate and compare Taylor and Kolmogorov scales. So, time scale of T f would be L f by u 1 prime and that would equal 30 nu divided by epsilon and under root 30 T epsilon that would equal under root 30 because nu by epsilon is uh, square root of is really the time scale 
of the Kolmogorov scales. So, we chose that the Taylor micro scale time scale is under root 30 times Kolmogorov time scale in the longitudinal direction. Similarly, L f divided by L epsilon would be again that quantity. Uh, time scale in the trans transverse direction would be root 15 times T epsilon. So, there is a considerable separation between uh, between time scales associated with Kolmogorov scales uh, and the micro scales, but not as big as what we observed between uh, uh, integral scales and the Kolmogorov scales. So, integral and Taylor scales are related as follows since epsilon is v dash cube by L in cube is equal to 15 nu times u dash square by L g. And if I take u dash as about a times v dash, then uh, it follows that L g by L int would be a root 15 under root nu by v dash L int equal to that, where Reynolds number of turbulence is of the order of 100. And therefore, T g by T integral would be under root 15 by that. In other words, the transverse micro scale would be much, much smaller than the integral scale and the same thing would apply also to the longitudinal time scale in comparison to integral time scale. The only difference being 15 would be replaced by 30. T epsilon by T integral as we observed is Reynolds T integral raised to minus 0.5. So, in summary, we can say L epsilon is less than L f and g and is also less than L integral, although the distance between this and this would be considerably smaller than the distance between this and this and the separation distance overall separation distance would be determined by the Reynolds number. Same story applies to the time scales, the Kolmogorov time scales would be much, much smaller than integrals time scales but just about small from compared to the micro scales, Taylor micro scales. So, now we have discovered that there are three scales, the middle one being representative. As I said, spatial correlations are very difficult to estimate and therefore, that makes L f g very difficult to estimate. In order to do that, we uh, undertake measurement of uh, what is called as an autocorrelation, in which, as I said, uh, we consider the same point, same point, uh, but separated by, uh, let us say, this is u1 dash at t, and this will be u1 dash at t plus delta t. Uh, separated by time and uh, we would define exactly in the same fashion as we defined this the spatial correlation coefficient and this is what I show here the e value of u dash at t at the same point x k uh, and the value of u dash j at uh, t plus de de delta t this is essentially b i j and uh, uh, u i dash squared which is b i i and u dash j is uh, squared, uh, this will be at t, uh, t plus delta t and this would be at t. And then uh, uh, again, if I plot uh, values of r i j for different values of delta t, the separation time, then I would get a perfect correlation of course, when delta t is 0, but it will go on declining as I go on increasing delta t and beyond a certain delta t, of course, the, the fluctuations at, at, the, at the later time would be completely uncorrelated with the, the, the fluctuation at time t equal to 0. So, like what we did earlier, I can estimate a micro time scale tau micro associated with L f g as uh, that equal to u dash i uh, into du i dash by d t 
at delta t equals 0 raised to minus 1 taking advantage of the fact that the uh, variation here is very nearly parabolic uh, and therefore, the projected uh, delta t or tau micro would be that. Likewise, the integral time scale would be uh, somewhere there uh, where 0 to infinity r i j d delta t. Now, we can get an idea of what should be the smallest magnitude of T max required in Reynolds averaging. In Reynolds averaging, the remember phi cap average equal to 1 over T as tending to infinity 0 to infinity uh, phi cap d t that is what we said and the really the uh, for practical engineering measurements we would of course need the estimate of epsilon. It has to be some finite time because we cannot go on measuring in for infinite time. That estimate key is now available all it says is that this from this expression we say continue for T max to be much much greater than tau integral. This would ensure reasonably that uh, phi dash uh, bar would be equal to 1 over T max uh, integral phi dash d t uh, 0 to T max would be equal to 0. That is, that is the meaning of the importance of the or the first importance of autocorrelation. There is also another very important thing. As I said, it is not possible to measure spatial gradients of u i dash uh, to estimate r i j, the spatial correlation coefficient. So, the time derivatives of fluctuations at a fixed point, however, are easier to measure with a single instrument like a hot wire can enable us to measure that as a function of time. And uh, Taylor made a hypothesis that if uh, mean u 1 is very much greater than uh, u 1 dash, which is usually the case, then uh, d u 1 dash by d t can be taken as minus u 1 into d u 1 dash by d x 1, which gives us the estimate of d u 1 dash by d x 1 required to estimate L f the longitudinal Taylor micro scale. And therefore, we can say that r 1 1 x 1 d x 1 would be equal to u 1 1 r 1 1 delta t d t or in other words L integral would be u 1 times tau integral that is given here. Now, this is a very, very important uh, deduction. There are two important deductions from autocorrelation. First of all, they are extreme, uh, they are much easier to measure than the spatial correlation. The autocorrelation gives you the idea of what T max should be. Usually, 4 to 5 times the integral tau int is taken as a, as a, as a in, in practical measurements. And then uh, we would uh, we are also now able to estimate the, the spatial correlation coefficient uh, and therefore estimate the L integral L integral from tau integral, which as I said is much easier to measure. So, my final comment on these two last two lectures would be that we have shown how turbulence once generated sustains itself by creating fluctuations of ever smaller and smaller length and time scales. This was shown firstly by observing terms in the kinetic energy equations, secondly from transverse momentum transfer processes in a boundary layer, where we got reasonably good idea of separation between the dissipation scale or viscosity affected scales and the large scale. And then thirdly, we did the scale analysis. We have also shown that although epsilon is associated with very, very small scale motions, magnitude can nonetheless be estimated from large scale characteristics of large scale motion. This fact is extensively used in turbulence modeling of Rand's equations. The length and time scales of ADs are easier to measure from autocorrelation. Usually, most people measure autocorrelations and from that derive the spatial correlation coefficients. 
energy from mean motion uh, is somehow transferred down, down, down to very small scales where viscosity takes over and kills turbulence. This story we have tried to understand in physical space with physical measurements, what can be done with physical measurements. But by transforming equations in the wave number space, it is possible to elucidate this story even more convincingly. That is called spectral analysis. Although the equations generated cannot be solved in physical space uh, unless they are brought back again in the physical space. The, uh, the equations in the wave number space are difficult to solve, but nonetheless it reveals a story of what really goes on a, or most likely going on in sustaining turbulence, which are the terms which actually uh, carry out energy production, turbulent energy production. What is the role of the redistributive terms that on the cross section vanish and what is the contribution of the dissipation, uh, dissipating motion. That story I will take up in the next lecture uh, where I will uh, explain what is spectral analysis. There is also another uh, uh, possible explanation of this transfer process, which can actually be shown uh, figuratively uh, uh, by imagining stretching and torturing of an ele fluid element by vorticity dynamics equations. And I will try to uh, show you how both these actually tell the same story that we have revealed already. Uh, through uh, equations in the physical space and measuring capabilities in the physical space.